father's grave. Their relationship was shattered and Nietzsche was utterly despondent. What followed was one of the most miserable periods in his life, but one in which he had the chance to test his own philosophy of suffering. Nietzsche fled in bleak mood. His books weren't selling. He was in bad health and often suicidal. In March 1883, Nietzsche wrote, in the deepest part of me, an immovable black melancholy holds sway. I cannot see even a reason to live beyond six months. He realized that this was a true test of his own ability to face suffering and to overcome it. I'm exerting every ounce of self-mastery, he wrote. Unless I can discover an alchemical trick to turn this muck into gold, I am lost. But in the depths of his misery, he poured himself into writing a new book, one which would prove him to be just such an alchemist. It was the work that he considered to be his greatest. Thus spoke Zarathustra. Zarathustra had huge impact. It inspired composers like Richard Strauss and writers from Joyce and Kafka to Yeats and Camus. A parody of the Bible that Nietzsche referred to as the fifth gospel, it centered around the spiritual journey of a mysterious mystical character called Zarathustra. And in it, the philosopher introduced one of his most notorious concepts, the Ubermensch or Superman. The book is a parable on the importance of self-overcoming. The imagery is of the mountains, and the figure of Zarathustra echoes Nietzsche himself. Two of its four books were written here, in the guest house where Nietzsche often stayed. It is remarkable being here, isn't it? Because it's in this room that Nietzsche wrote, one of his most groundbreaking and influential works. This is uh, the place where he first had the ideas about the book Zarathustra. Zarathustra is a prophet who comes down the mountain and he wants to talk to people in a town about this great event that God is dead, that Christianity with all its certain universal absolute moral values is no longer believed in and that the question of what it is to be human and how one is to live as a human uh, needs to be answered anew. But nobody listens to Zarathustra. And one of the mechanisms to deliver that is this difficult concept, the Ubermensch, the Overman or the Superman. Who or what exactly is that? It's easier to say what it is not. It's not a biological concept. It's not some kind of superior human race. An Ubermensch is someone who is no longer reliant on, on inauthentic external goals. Society gives, gives him or her parents, religions. It's someone who is able to commit to goals that you set yourself. You offer humanity goals. And Nietzsche thinks it's a terrifyingly difficult task because the guidelines are missing. There are no blueprints. And whilst you full well know that whatever task you set yourself isn't universal, isn't good for all, it's nevertheless one you commit yourself to. It's one you strive towards. The Übermensch is someone who can shift and see that the responsibility and the joy of creating life lies not with some transcendent God, but lies within oneself. 
In pouring himself into writing Zarathustra, Nietzsche not only gave his own life meaning in the face of suffering, but he also began to see that suffering itself was the key to unlocking the elusive secret of happiness. So what do you think happiness is for Nietzsche? We traditionally see happiness in opposition to pain, exertion, suffering, etc. For him, that is not the case. It's striving towards something. Uh, it's suffering through that great task you've set yourself. So just flying up onto the summit of a high mountain in a helicopter will not give you the kind of feeling of happiness that you experience when you have spent 15 days walking towards the summit. It's overcoming obstacles that resist you achieving that goal that is part of the experience of happiness. So it's not just pleasure but pain that can pain be happiness. Pain is almost an enabling condition for happiness. Nietzsche never found love again, but he'd succeeded in transforming his despair into a work whose vision would go on to resonate with generations of artists and thinkers. He'd become a living testament to his idea of the eternal return. And he now turned his attention away from the loss of meaning created by the murder of God to the crisis of values left in its wake.